Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Friday, August 9th, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you're part of my life as well. Well, today is Tom Slaughter's birthday. Happy birthday, Tom. Love you very much. I'm so delighted that you're part of our fellowship. You and Corinne and, and your family, we're so glad that you're here and uh, we love you very much. Hope you have a great, great birthday today. Um, today is the last day of Vacation Bible School from 9 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. And then, of course, this evening we have the closing program. I think it's from 6 to 8 p.m. here at the church uh, closing program. Anybody's invited to come out, see what the kids have been doing, and uh, hear them sing some songs and share about the, the gospel that they're learning and also have some ice cream. So that'll be a great time tonight, 6 to 8 p.m. Um, to, tonight also, I don't know if the Young Adults Fellowship is happening at 7 o'clock, um, but it's not impossible, although a lot of our young adults are, are part of Vacation Bible School. So um, check with your leader. <coughs> Nothing scheduled tomorrow, uh, Saturday, August 10th. I'll be moving my mom uh, from one apartment to another from 9 a.m. until whenever we finish. Um, but uh, in the rain, probably, is what I'm, it's looking like in the uh, forecast. Um, on Sunday, we have our normal Sunday morning schedule with a prayer meeting, 9 o'clock, and morning service at 10 a.m. All right, on Sunday, I preached on uh, Exodus chapter 12, the last half of that chapter. And um, one of the passages that, uh, one of the themes of the last part of Exodus chapter 12 is the idea of circumcision that no one can eat of the Passover in the days to come when they celebrate the Passover as a remembrance, uh, a remembrance feast, remembering the Passover uh, in Exodus, which, uh, which is God uh, bringing the 10th plague upon Egypt, but passing over the homes of anyone who trusted in him and, uh, and put themselves under the blood of the lamb, that no one in the future may eat of the Passover unless they're circumcised. And there's this idea that, uh, that uh, you're either in or you're out, right? Circumcision of every male uh, in Israel was a rite of initiation. It was a, a way that someone became part of Israel. They become part of Israel through the rite of circumcision, the ritual of circumcision. Um, now, that meant that you know, baby boys at eight days old were circumcised. They became part of Israel. But if you were an adult who wanted to join yourself to Israel, maybe you were from another country or nation or ethnicity, and you have heard about the God of Israel and you want to join yourself to the nation of Israel, you uh, and your household would need to be circumcised. Um, and uh, like I said on Sunday, I don't know uh, what the if there was a ritual way for women to become part of Israel, although uh, we have some examples of women becoming part of Israel, um, it's not at all clear that there's any kind of ritual involved in a woman becoming part of Israel. Um, we have uh, Ruth, who joins herself to Israel by making an oath to Naomi, where you go, I go, your people will be my people, your God will be my God. Um, we have uh, Rahab, the prostitute, uh, in the book of Judges. Um, uh, uniting herself and her family over to Israel uh, simply through faith. Um, but for males, the ritual was circumcision. And it was a delineator between are you in or are you out? Are you, are you one of the people of God or are you not one of the people of God? And, you know, Christians, uh, we embrace the Old Testament as part of our, our spiritual history um, but we're not part of the covenant at Sinai, the covenant uh, with Mo through Moses with Israel. And so we don't have circumcision as a ritual of entrance into the covenant community. We enter into a different covenant. We're not into the Sinai covenant. We're into the covenant through Jesus Christ, the new covenant that Jesus institutes through his blood. Is there any kind of initiation ritual in Christianity, um, through this covenant, through the Jesus covenant, is there an initiatory right? It's it's not circumcision. The Apostle Paul says it's it's circumcision of the heart. 
Uh, let's actually, I'm, I want to back up here and just say, we will we'll, we'll talk about this. Exodus 12, verse 48. If a stranger shall, sh shall sojourn with you and would keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. Then he may come near and keep it. He shall be as a native of the land, but no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. So that's the ritual in the Old Testament. That's the ritual of entrance into the Sinai covenant. But the, 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 what the Apostle Paul says is that circumcision or uncircumcision is of no value um, because you can be circumcised in your flesh and still not be joined to God through obedience and faith. What matters, Paul says, is a circumcision of the heart. And so for Christians, the initiatory ritual is, is faith, right? We, we have faith in Jesus Christ, but we do have a symbol that symbolizes uh, the coming to faith in Jesus Christ. And that's the ritual of baptism. So for Christians, the ritual of baptism is a symbol of the initiation of our entry into the kingdom of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Um, now, it is just a symbol. It, it's possible to be united to Christ in covenant with Christ and not have been baptized. But baptism is a powerful symbol of what it means to be joined together with Christ. In baptism, we are symbolically buried with Jesus as we go under the water. And then we rise again with Jesus as we come back up out of the water. It's a symbol of how Jesus' death and resurrection is what gives us entrance into the covenant with God, what gives us entrance into the kingdom of God. So baptism is a as a symbol of the initiation that we have uh, into the kingdom of God. So I encourage all Christians, if, you, if you've given your life to Christ, to be baptized. If you've not ever been baptized, be baptized. Uh, get up there and enact this symbol, which, which demonstrates, which re represents, which, which symbolizes your unity with Christ through his death and resurrection. It is a powerful and important symbol, and I urge all Christians to be baptized. We also have one other symbol, which is a symbol not of our initiation into the kingdom, but of our continued um, faithfulness to the kingdom. And that second symbol, of course, is communion. We eat the bread, we drink the cup. They're symbolic of the body of Christ broken for us and the blood of Christ shed for us. And we eat and we drink this symbolic ritual every day, every, every all the time. Not every, not every day, but uh, here at New Beginnings, it's once a month. Different Christians celebrate it with different frequency. Um, but we, we eat the bread, we drink the cup as a symbol of our continued existence in the kingdom of God through the body and blood of Jesus. Of course, the Israelites had uh, other rituals for the continued existence in the kingdom and, and in, the, in the covenant, and, and that included the Passover, right? The, the, continue, the eating of the Passover meal um, on a regular basis, once a year, um, was, their, uh, was one clear, clear symbol of their continuation in the people of God. Now, interestingly, uh, both circumcision and Passover are two of, I think, three things in the life of the people of Israel where God said, if you don't do this, you're cut off from the people of Israel. You are separated from the life of the, of the, the covenant community. The third one was keeping the Sabbath. So there was uh, eating the Passover, there was circumcision and keeping the Sabbath were the three rituals that sort of uh, indicated that you were you had entered into the covenant community and you were continuing in the life of the covenant community. For us, it's communion and baptism that symbolize those things. So the next time uh, you take communion, I want you to think about how that is uh, a symbol of your continuing uh, dependence on the death of, and resurrection of Jesus for your life in the covenant community. And next time you witness a baptism, I want you to remember that this is a symbol of the initiation of this person into the, the community of faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these symbols, these vivid pictures that you give us that we can see and feel and taste and touch uh, the truth about uh, 
entrance into your kingdom. Uh, we are not just um, minds in a vat, but we are, we are embodied creatures. And these symbols help make it real and vivid for us to understand the truths of what Jesus did for us. I pray your blessing on every person within the sound of my voice. If they've not been baptized, I pray that you would move on their heart to be baptized. And I pray that they would, whenever they are baptized or witness a baptism, that they would remember uh, the, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And whenever they take communion, Lord, I pray that they would remember the death and resurrection of Jesus as well as a continuing reminder of what is necessary to keep us in the kingdom. Uh, Lord, I pray your blessing on the end of Vacation Bible School today, uh, last session in the morning, and then the closing ceremony in the evening. I pray for our young adults, whether they're meeting tonight or not, please bless them. And I pray for our Sunday morning service uh, and morning prayer. I pray that you'd bless New Beginnings Church. Help us to be a blessing uh, to our community and to one another as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings. I look forward to talking to you again on Monday.